Hey guys, happy Sunday. I'm here with another artist spotlight. Bobby Penn's artist spotlight is rolling right along. And today I have with me author Leslie Crawford, who is right on time. I love it, y'all. When we do these lives, it's so important to be prompt. So when I see my guest, you know we in for a treat. So Leslie is here. Everybody welcome her as she loads up. There she is. Hey. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great, Queen. It's a pleasure to have you today. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Yes. Yes. I'm excited as well. So go ahead and oops, briefly um, explain yourself. Introduce yourself to our viewers. As you said, my name is Leslie Crawford. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I started writing about 10 years ago, and it really started off as a hobby. I was like, oh, I want to know if I can write a book. And it went from there. About three years ago, I started having a lot of people ask me, how did I write my book? Can I help them write a book? And I was offering my services. I'm like, yeah, I'll show you how to do this, how to do this, and how to do this. And what I realized along the way, a lot of people was just writing books, but they weren't trying to build a business from it. And they looked at their book as a hobby. And two years ago, I quit my job, went on the strength of God saying, do this full time. And I started a consulting um, firm called Exposed Books Publishing, where I help authors not only just write a book, but how to build generational wealth from it, how to create those multiple streams of income just by writing that one book and how it can actually go from a hobby to an actual business. I love that. The power of the pen, guys. That is what we are talking about today. Um, Leslie, tell me a little bit about your experience. You are born and raised in Baltimore. So yes. talk to me about that experience and how it's influenced uh, your storytelling. Wow. So I grew up in the projects of Baltimore, um, in South Baltimore, a neighborhood called Cherry Hill. It was, it, some people look at it and they find their nose up, but it was home. It was to us, it was the best place on earth. It was everything. But even though it was everything as us to kids, but I saw a whole lot, a whole lot growing up, you know, crime and everything. And I always told myself that I didn't want to be a statistic. You know, I didn't want to be like everyone else that I saw. And, you know, people in my family, no one was going to college and no one was doing anything. It was just all, oh, we're just living life here in the projects. And as much as I love being home, I still wanted to do something better. So went to, graduated high school, went to college, along with, you know, my siblings and some other cousins. But I took what I saw growing up and I use all of that stuff inside of my books. That's how I was able to write good urban fiction books because I lived half of that stuff. I, yeah. I saw the things that went on in in the hood. I love that. So you, you draw from your actual experience um, yeah. to amplify those stories and validate them. And I think that that's important for no matter what your background is. You know what I mean? Every story Absolutely. is valid and worth being told. So I love that. Um, Talk to me about your community outreach. I think that's also really important. You do um, after school programs, you work with the youth to help them tell stories. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so in 2018, I was sitting at lunch with a friend and I just was like, I think I want to help children write books. And she was like, what? I was like, I do. I was like, I don't see anyone else doing this. And the literacy rate in our schools, especially in low income, immediate income areas, the literacy rate is horrible. And in my mind, I was like, the, me helping them write books is going to help with them inside of the classroom. That reading, those reading and writing skills will help them. And I just started sending out emails to every school in Maryland. I mean, when I say every elementary school, every elementary school that I could drive through within 60 minutes from my house, got an email. And that was a good 10 counties. And wow. I got a lot of no's. I got some maybes. But then one day this lady called me and she said, um, you were referred to me by a principal. We run an after school program here in Montgomery County at a couple of schools. I would love for you to bring your program here. And I was like, what? 
And she was like, yeah. So I was in, I started off with just three schools initially. And then just before the pandemic hit, I ended up with six schools throughout um, Montgomery County where I was teaching kids how to write and publish books. And total, we had about 200 students that wrote and published short stories during the two years that I was there before COVID hit. That is so incredible and so empowering. Where were their stories published? Their stories are available on Amazon. They're available on Barnes and Noble and actually through the um, recreation center that ran the after school programs. Oh, wow. So they're like legitimately published authors. Yeah, they're published authors. They have their ISBN. They have their names are on the books. They are oh. published authors. Tell me maybe one one youth that has come to you and shared what that meant to them. What what have you heard? What have they told you? I had one fifth grader. She, from the beginning, she was like, I don't want to do this. And I was like, well, you don't even know what we're doing. She was like, they said we're going to be writing books because the kids didn't have a choice of what class they were put in. So okay. they were just placed in a class. And she was like, Miss Leslie, I don't want to do this. And I'm like, why? She's like, I don't even like reading. I don't even read. So that wow. right there had me like what do you mean you don't read she was like i don't read if i don't have to read then i don't read she said there are no books in my house my parents don't make me read and stuff like that so she was a struggle and she was like she was first three weeks she was like i'm not doing this i'm not doing it i'm not doing it so every week i'm coming to her you got your story together you got your outline together she was like no because i'm not doing it i'm not doing it and we had a conversation one day about the importance of reading and writing. And her issue was reason why she doesn't do it because English is not her first language. Oh. And, you know, and I didn't know that. And so, you know, I said, well, I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you 90% of my attention. The rest of my 10% will be spread out throughout the class, but I'm going to sit here and we're going to work together to write this book. You tell me your idea. I'm going to write it down for you. We're going to get this book done. And that's exactly what we did on our last day. Our last day was actually the day they shut schools down. It wow. was the day before they shut schools down. She came up to me and she was saying, thank you so much, Miss Leslie. I'm glad I did this. I told my mom that I wrote a book and I'm going to surprise her with a copy of it. I'm so happy I did this. And a lot of the kids, they it was a lot of pushback from many of them because they aren't pushed to write. They aren't, they yeah. wasn't pushed to read, you know, in their household or in their self-belief. Yeah, so I had to push them and push them and push them. And most of the kids, like, when we did it during the wintertime, they gifted their parents their book for Christmas to let their parents know, this is what I'm doing in this after-school program. That's so special. I love that. Talk to me, give me some advice for any aspiring authors who might be watching us right now. What are some drawbacks that your clients mention frequently that you wouldn't mind maybe dropping here? I think the biggest thing is people like, who's going to buy my book? People automatically get in their head that I have a good story to tell, but I don't have any supporters. I don't have anyone that will support me. And that was me when I wrote my first book. It seemed like all of my supporters were people that I didn't know. The people who I thought was, should support me, the people I was, my A1s from day one that I played in the sandbox with, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're going to buy this book. And I would get in my feelings when it didn't happen. Yeah, I had yeah. family members buy it, my best friend buy it, but other people, I'm like, I haven't supported you in everything. Why aren't you buying my book? And right. I had to get over that because I had to realize that it was millions of people out there that was going to buy my book. I just had to get in front of them. That's what I teach my clients. You see every day. Because those people may not even be your target. They may not even need your book. So why yeah. are you worrying about the two or three people that you want to buy your book versus worrying about the people out there that need your book? You just got to go out there and find them. And yeah. when they get out of that mindset of who they think should support them versus going out and finding their supporters, that's when they start seeing results. That's one thing I feel like I, I, I hear repeatedly across any industry of entrepreneurs. We look to our friends and family to support mm -hmm. us. And I think a lot of us have experienced that where they're not always the first to be on board. Um, but I think it was very important for you to point out because they might genuinely not be your target demo and that's fine. 
Um, so I love that piece of advice. Please don't let that stop you. The key is to find the people who do want what you have um, and they are there. So I appreciate that insight. Um, so tell me more about the literacy shop. This is something that you, you just c concocted this year. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> it was honestly something that I didn't even realize I was going to do. I wanted to step away from writing urban fiction books and I wanted to start writing children's books. And during the pandemic, I, when schools are really closed and I realized we aren't going back to school because they kept saying 30 days and then this, I was like, you know what? We're not going back to school. This after school program is completely shut down. Yeah. I need to do something. But just before we left, I used to work in an elementary school part-time during the day. And I, I had these group of fifth graders. They always gravitated to me. Every time they see Miss Crawford, you coming to our class today? You coming to our class? And we were having a conversations one day about reading. It was like, we don't read. I was like, what, what is it with y'all kids not reading? They was like, because we can't find books that we can relate to for yeah. with characters that look like us. And I was like, well, there are a lot of illustrated books out there. But then I thought about it. A lot of chapter books where fifth graders, middle school, and high school kids are reading, they aren't, they can't relate to them. You know, a yeah. lot of these books is out there, they just couldn't. So I sit home and I was just sitting there writing and writing and I came up with the book called Dear Future Black Queen, which is a list of um, selection of poems and letters that I wrote to young girls letting them know you are a future queen. Hold your head up, put your crown on, because the world will not exist without you. And I didn't know how I was going to sell the book because I didn't want to put it on my publishing website. I was like, well, I don't want to put it on there. I need a completely different website. And I kept hearing the word literacy. Literacy just kept popping in my mind. And I was like, oh, let me just, what about the literacy shop? And I went and no domain was being used. I was like, okay, I'm going to buy this domain. I still had no website. I started doing pre-sales for Dear Future Black Queen, but still had no idea what I was going to do with the literacy shop. And I swear, one, two mornings in a row, I was waking up 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. Had no idea why. Because usually, since this pandemic hit, I wasn't waking up to 8, 9 o'clock. Yeah. And I just kept waking up, kept waking up. And one morning, I heard God say, you need to create a website for other authors. It's not all about you. Mm. And I jumped up. I was like, okay. I grabbed my phone. I started typing notes in my phone. I went back to sleep. And that's how the literacy shop was birthed. I created the website, not just for um, kids that look like us to be able to have books, but for authors that are self-published to be able to have another platform to place their books on. Because as a self-published author, it is very hard, very hard to get your book inside of a bookstore if you're not backed by a traditional publishing company. And self-published authors, a lot of times, we don't get the respect that we should have because it's, it's not easy publishing a book. It, right. It's not an easy process when you have to do everything yourself. So I wanted to offer that platform for them to be able to say, you know what, my book is inside of a bookstore. I don't have them go through a whole bunch of red tape, who published your book or this or this or that. I want you to be able to have a platform. As long as your book has a message to kids that look like us, your book can be on our website. I love that. And I, what the takeaway from that was that our gifts are not for us. Our gifts are to open doors and pave the way for others. Absolutely. I think that's so important. And I respect um, from everything you've told me from your journey, that is an overarching theme is that you are reaching out and providing opportunity for others or helping to facilitate the dreams of others. So I love that so, Thank so much. You. Thank you. Now, let's get to know you a little bit better. When was the last time you felt embarrassed? Oh, wow. Um, it's been a minute. I would, this is when I was working in corporate America. Um, this is like three years ago. And I used to um, work in downtown Baltimore. And I never wanted to park down there because it was expensive. So I would park in a neighborhood. And then I would catch the ferry over across the water. And I'm, I go down there and run it late because I didn't leave out the house in time enough that morning. Usually I'm down there like 15, 20 minutes early. And I don't know why I decided to run to the ferry in, in some platforms, um, wedges. But as I was running, I fell. 
I'm, I'm like, okay, is anyone around looking? It was a couple of guys that was behind me. And I was like, are they laughing at me? Like, I was so <laughs> embarrassed. I was like, oh, my gosh. And I tried to get up and play it off and just walk. But I was in so much pain. My knees was hurting. I was going to ask, hurt. did you roll your ankles? The platforms ain't no joke. <laughs> I didn't, but my knees was, I would, when I finally got to work and I pulled my pants leg up, my knee was scraped up. I was like, oh, my gosh. But every time I would see them guys in the building, I would just be like, now, who did they tell that they saw me fall <laughs> running down the street? I remember the last time I fell. It was pretty embarrassing. Um, I was being chased by birds. I had never been, like, I'd never heard of birds, like, attacking. But apparently, if your hair, or if you're too close to a nest where they're, like, I guess, nursing a new egg, they will be very protective of it and, like, as a team, will swarm, as they call it. So it's not really an attack, but, like, the goal is to scare you away. On top of that, if you have a lot of hair that's pulled up, they think it's like another animal. So whatever the case, I'm coming from the gym. It was leg day, girl. My legs were like noodles. <laughs> and here come these birds. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. I tried to go back, they followed me back. I tried to go the other way, they followed me that way. Where I needed to go was that way. So I'm like, maybe I can make a run for it. I tried to run and my legs were like, no ma'am. I went down, mm -hmm. I had a huge scrape across my knee too. They like were, one of them actually like pecked me. And I was able to get up and just, like, go somewhere where there weren't any trees and they left me alone. But, like, that was the scariest thing. Because <laughs> I've never heard of birds doing that before. It was so wild. I would have had a heart attack. I have a fear of birds. If I see a yeah. bird, I'm going the other way. Even the little, little wild birds that be outside, I have a fear. I will run the other way. If I see, I won't go. If I'm yeah. with my son, he'd be like, Mom, come on. I'm like, nope. I can't do it. I, I, I don't know what, what it so is. Betrayed. Go ahead. I, 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 I don't know what it is. I just, I'm just scared that they just want to attack me. Yeah. I don't You're me. smarter than I am. I have my defenses down because I actually used to have a pet parakeet. So I feel betrayed by birds. Like, I love birds. <laughs> I had a bird in my house. Like, how dare you? But anyway, I learned a, a good lesson about Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Lamore. She's in here. She was like leg day of the worst. It is like that was not the day for these birds to try. Not at I all. wasn't prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so Leslie, tell me your um favorite food. My favorite food is New York style pizza. Something that yes! I should not be eating because I love cheese. So New York style pizza is the best. And we just had a like a couple years ago a New York style pizza shop open up where I live at. I'm there all the time. I love <laughs> they it. know you by name now. <laughs> yeah, they. Be, I, I'm just give me a slice of cheese pizza, and I'm. I'm. That's all I need. <laughs> awesome. Um, can you tell me three things your fans or supporters don't know about you, but they'd be really intrigued to know? Well, yeah, Maybe just somebody. found out. Just found out I'm afraid of birds. Like, birds. <laughs> but the crazy thing is, I have a tattoo of a bird. <laughs> on the back of my neck which is so weird but make it make sense it, it, that's a whole nother story so okay. <laughs> um that one thing um everybody knows i have a son um let me see let me see um i don't like to open i was gonna ask that if you had children he, he'll be son? 17 in october oh wow he'll be Big 17 boy. in october yeah yeah um yeah <laughs> those teenage days i'm like an open book on my social media pages i'm so open like i i don't think it's anything that people don't really know about me because i i'm just so transparent like i be telling everything like i don't be kidding i'm just transparent i'm just an open book to wear yeah. because i like to be truthful and honest and not let people think oh this whole journey is like the easiest thing in the world because yeah. it's not it is not at all um, one day I would say I am a crybaby. I'll cry at the drop okay. of a dime. Like just from That's watching sweet. Movie, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm getting so emotional. Like <laughs> and it could be something real simple. But those are probably the two things that I could think of that I have not shared with people. Okay. So it sounds like you might be an empath. You feel you feel for other people a lot? Yeah. Yeah. I'm very compassionate. People know that know me. I'm like the person when they having relationship problems or they just want to call, they be like, are you busy? And when I hear that, I'm like, no, 
already know. <laughs> What's going on, girl? <laughs> Let me put the TV on pause and. Come on, tell me, tell, like, I'm the mother. I'm like, all right, come on, tell me what's going on. And I just sit there. I'm the person that everybody goes to when it comes to relationship problems. Why, I don't know, because I'm not even in a relationship. But <laughs> they take this, listen to my advice, and I just be like, okay. Oh, girl, I need to, we need to talk offline after this, because I got some questions. Sis. <laughs> I usually be saying to myself, but I call myself, you know, we quarantine and get to know some people, and it's like, yeah, we need to talk. I need your advice. <laughs> What's your sign? I'm a Libra. Okay, that makes sense. I'm a Libra, but I'm also an introvert. Like, if I could be in a bubble, I would live in a bubble. But yeah. I'm also, like, if, if I know you and I'm comfortable around you, that's when the extrovert comes out. Okay. But if I'm just getting to know somebody, I'm like... <laughs> I'll literally just look at you. There'll be no expression on my face. Like I'm trying to fill you out and see yeah. what you all about before I even open my mouth. And people be like, "Why you look so mean?" I'm like, "I'm not mean. I'm just trying to figure people out before yeah. I let them in." Yeah, yeah. I think I'm similar in that way. I think people would be surprised to like know that because I probably come across as like this big personality all the time and like. Obviously, that's a part of me, but my default mm -hmm. is probably really, like, to myself. I'm a homebody. Like you said, it takes me a while to kind of warm up to people. Um, so I, I completely relate to that. And it makes sense because what we do mm -hmm. as writers, as um, recorders, as people who share so much of ourselves, it's important to have that balance as a Libra. Yes. You know, to protect certain parts of ourselves as mm -hmm. well as share the parts that we are comfortable with. So I completely relate to that. Yeah, I'm just, I just feel like when quarantine happened, it was like, aren't you tired of being in the house? I was like, no, I'm good. My default. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've been in quarantine, so I don't care. Yeah. Like, I'm good. Yes, yes. Um, is there anything else we should know? Any upcoming projects? Any new books dropping? Anything else we should look out for? Um, I am in the process of writing another book. I told myself I was stepping back from urban fiction, but I just keep getting all of these ideas in my head. So I am working on another book. I don't even know. I just wrote down the characters. I don't even know what it's going to be about. I just know my characters in my head. But I do, I just launched some digital products for um, people that may not be able to afford my coaching services and stuff like that. So I launched a marketing guide to where I'm showing you the different ways you can market your book. Because I'm um, showing you how I was able to sell out one book four different times within 30 days, the methods that I applied to do that. Um, I just dropped a self-publishing guide for those that want to learn how to self-publish, but do it the correct way and not through these free services that's out here that owns your ISBN, your book, et cetera. And I launched a um, another guide on multiple streams of income, how you can create seven streams of income just by writing one book. So those yeah. are things that I just um, released that I'm really excited about. Yes. Well, I am so proud of you. I know we're just meeting each other, but I'm still proud of you, my sister, for overcoming anything that could have stood in your way. You didn't let that stop you when you're walking in your purpose and helping others to walk in theirs. I think that is truly important and truly admirable. So thank you so much for spending your time with me. Thank Before you. we get off of here, tell everybody where they can keep up with you, purchase your products, contract your services, drop it now. All right. My Instagram is of author underscore Leslie. My website is www.exposedbooks.com. That's E-X-P-O-S-E-D-B-O-O-K-S.com. All right, guys, make sure you tap in with Leslie. Get your stories out, okay? She can help you do it. And until next time, I'm Bobby Penn with another Artist Spotlight. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.